What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the YouTube Pro Cycling Team. I'm recording this just after finishing Benji's episodes where he finished Paranese, Terreno Adriatico and also played Milan San Remo. A very nice top three there with the informed man at the moment it would seem, Ben Swift. So in this one we have quite a few races and stages to cover. We start with the Volta Ciclista a Catalunya. Seven stages in that one including some massive mountains that goes without saying though. We also have E3, another of the Cobble Classics as well as Ghent Wevelgem. So the only race in today's episode that is a sponsor objective is the E3 Bing Bang Classic. Only one star, they do want us to get a top five though. Worth noting for later in the episode. So leading our squad in this one is the American TJ Van Garderen. I think this will be his last race for a little while. He needs a few weeks off and then he will be building up to the Tour de France, which is his big goal this season. Joining him in the squad and leading the sprints is Edvald Boerson Hagen. Now I could have taken him to E3 in Ghent Wevelgem. I've decided though he will be the main sprinter for us at this race. In addition to that, we've got Luis Leon Sanchez actually making his season debut and debut for the team in this one. We also have Chris Nealands, Tom Pickcock as well, the 20-year-old from the UK. We also have Harold Tiada and Diego Camargo to help out in the mountains. So starting the Volta Ciclista at Catalonia, we have 161 kilometers, quite a few big climbs to get over today. However, I do think some of the sprinters will be able to get over these climbs and then be involved in the finish. Uh, the game seems to have Fuglesang, Formula Valverde and the real climbers as the favourites. I think some of the punchier sprinters will be able to cope with this though. Let's see. Here we go then, getting underway for the race. I do want to try and go in the breakaway today to try and compete for some of these mountain points. I was thinking Sanchez, a minus one day for him though, so I'm going to try and get either Pickock or Neilands to the front. So Pickock has come to the front. You can see attacking away very aggressively indeed. Already three riders up the road. Hopefully we can get away and catch them. So we're just catching up with the guys at the front. Don't want to pace too hard at the moment. You can see eight riders in this group. Some pretty strong riders here. More riders coming on as well. The likes of Remy Cavagna is here. Um, so I do think we will have a pretty big breakaway if the Peloton decide to let them go, which they're not doing at the moment. So CCC are trying desperately to bring in the breakaway at this point. I'm not sure if they're gonna do it though. They've only got one man on the front. I don't think he's going to be strong enough. Pickcock needs to try and move up now because we're going for the first KOM sprint. Um, he's the man I'm going to try and win the KOM with um, at this race. You can see two riders off the front. We're trying to pace ourselves here. Vingegaard, let's try and grab his, uh, his wheel. He's a very punchy rider. Let's try and attack past these guys right now. Going to be very, very difficult though for Pickcock. I don't think we're going to get any points. No, we come fifth just outside the points here. So Steels has been dropped from the breakaway. You can see not a great deal of collaboration going on in this group. I'm just not strong enough to work at the moment with Pickcock. We're just doing our best to stay here as long as possible. As yet a bowl attack, let's try and follow Chad Hager. We're unable to though, and I do think we are at risk of getting dropped here by the breakaway. So two and a half K to go, still nine riders in this group. It did all come back together. The guys that did attack weren't strong enough to keep it going. More attacks right now. Let's just try and pace on maybe 82. See how long we can do that for. But I don't think we're going to get any of these points. There are quite a few available. Hopefully we can do. And Lachlan Morton overtakes us right here. Let's just try and push it to 99 to the line now. So it's Yetsa Bol taking first position at the climb. We then have Vingegaard, Cavagna, the other Yumbo rider, Hager, Morton, Letournier, and then Pickcock. I think we might get one point, one or two points right there for Pickcock. Not really worth it though. Let's try and catch up to the breakaway now. So we are back in the breakaway. Two and a half minutes on the Peloton at the moment. Let's try and move up somewhat because I do want to try and challenge for this intermediate sprint with Pickcock. I think we're probably one of the better sprinters in this group. Up to 90, 92, 99. Sprint for it with one. K to go on the left hand side. Can we take these points? Cavagna and the light try to follow. We take it very comfortably though in the end just about slowing up um, in time or, or not too early 
taking three points and a few bonus seconds as well. So we're just coming up to the next climb on the day. Let's try and come up on 85 with Pickock. Two and a half K to go, attacks already. We're we'll trying and jump in Cavagna's wheel. It's Haga on the front from Morton, the Tournier. Yetza Bowl comes next. I do think we just about have enough yellow to try and challenge for these points. Haga looks pretty much done now. Let's try and stay on Cavagna's wheel for the moment. Lachlan Morton looking very, very strong on this climb. We've got pretty much nothing left to give at this point with Tom Pickock. We can try and sprint maybe as Cavagna now tries to come past the other guys. We're trying to attack past them right now with Pickock. It's a strong little punchy attack as well. Can we hold it to the line? I don't think so. We might get fifth or sixth right here um, and only four more points. So we're some way off that KOM jersey here. So not too much climbing left to go in the stage. Only this climb coming up next really. Um, and it's four minutes up to the breakaway. A pretty big gap as you can see. We're pretty much cooked with Pickcock. I don't think we have a chance at the stage. Maybe someone else in this group does though. There you go then, Pickock has now been dropped from that breakaway group. A few other guys going out the back as well. Nowhere near strong enough to challenge today for that mountain jersey. Back in the peloton, plenty of our guys are really struggling now. We can maybe, uh, maybe move back very slightly in this group. 4k to go, I'm hoping Boris and Hagen can stay here over the top. Looking unlikely at this point though. So at the front of the race, it's Yetzabol and Vingegaard challenging for those KOM points. Still three minutes back to the Peloton. You can see Boris and Hagen and Nierlands are just getting dropped right here. That is far from ideal. And we could be left with just TJ van Garderen in this group at this point. So over the top of the climb we go. Pickock just getting caught now by the Peloton. Um, I do think these guys will just about be able to stay here. Just about 97 riders in this group try and stay here. You can see it's only Van Garderen with any yellow left. Our team getting absolutely destroyed at the moment. I did hope Boris and Hagen could stay here, so I will pace, try and bring him back in. He's only a minute and a half down. Maybe there is a small chance we can get him back in the front. So you can see Camargo and Nielands have done a beautiful job right here for Edval Boris and Hagen. Trying to get back into the Peloton, and we have done it now. Uh, the only issue is that the breakaway is still some way up the roads. And it now looks like the Peloton have given up on the stage and it will be contested by these three men right here. So with Boris and Hagen back in this group, I have raced to the front with Sanchez, Tiada, and uh, Camargo. Put them up to maybe 93 on this only steep section remaining. I think Boris and Hagen plenty strong enough to stay in this group. We'll even go up to maybe 99. Let's just shove it up to 99. See if we can try and catch uh, Jonas Vingegaard, who looks dead set to win the stage at this point. So three and a half K to go in the stage, still over two minutes back on the leading man, Jonas Vingegaard. Well up the road, he's cruising into the final kilometer. He's going to take the stage. We'll be competing for, I think, fourth or third place on the day. We'll sprint with Boris Hagen here. Pickcock can now go. Boris Hagen, everyone can sprint trying to take some points in the points classification, if nothing else. And it will be, I think, David Godou taking third. Boris Hagen was fourth in the end. No damage is done for TJ Van Garderen in this one either. Unbelievable ride by the 23-year-old Jonas Vingegaard in this one, destroying the rest of the breakaway and holding off the chasing peloton. We get a nice top five with Boris Hagen. Shane Pickott wasn't strong enough to challenge Vingegaard in that group because to be fair his stats aren't too different Vingegaard slightly stronger at this point of course so stage two of the race classified as a flat stage which makes me question why Fuglesang is the favorite with his 65 sprint um, anyhow a very good chance for Edvard Boson Hagen to potentially take a stage win in this one so you can see it's Chris Nealands with a slightly better day than Tom Pickock today so I think it's only fair that he gets his chance in the breakaway in this one. Um, I didn't actually realize, but Tom Pickock, fourth in the GC after those bonus seconds he took at the intermediate sprint. So looking at the guys in this group, I do think Nealands is probably going to be strong enough and punchy enough to take these points. Let's try and come a bit closer to the front of this group. 
El Faraz now on the attack. Let's take his wheel. Um, I think we're going to have to sprint pretty early. Does get quite steep now. 800 meters to go. We'll try and attack past him. He's done already. And Neolan's looking very, very good indeed. Uh, Larson, our closest challenger. But we will just about hold him off and take six points at the first KOM sprint today. So looking again at the start list, can't really see any stronger sprinters here than Burson Hagen. Maybe Daryl Impey. Of course, Alvaro Hodge. He's a potential danger for the stage. We'll want to drop him if possible over these climbs. Uh, but apart from that, I do think Burson Hagen definitely one of the strongest sprinters at the race. So it would be good to see him there in the final at the front. So we have been joined by the pretty strong young American Brandon McNulty up the road. Here's the reason that UAE were pacing so hard. Let's try and take these intermediate sprint points now with Neerland as well as the bonus seconds. We'll sprint with 1k to go. Can we outlast everyone else? I do think we're the fastest guy in this group and that proves to be the case. Another win at the sprint for Neerland. So 3k to go to the next KOM sprint. You can see we're on the steepest part of the climb at the moment. Let's try a little one right now with Neerlands. Try and punch away from these guys. Seems we're unable to though. Let's just sit in. But they do continue. Let's follow Marte on the left hand side. 2k to go to the top of this climb. It does get pretty flat. Hopefully we can rely on our solid sprint compared to these guys. Up to 99 with Neerlands. McNulty trying to come through. Neerlands tries to hold him off. Unable to though, we will get second place at that climb. McNulty taking the points. Oh my word, it has happened. TJ Van Garderen is down. Luckily, he is able to continue. We're going to have to wait for him now with Pidcock, Camargo, maybe Sanchez as well. Let's drop a few guys back. Tiara can look after Boas and Hagen. Let's try and get Van Garderen back in the peloton here. So the team have spent a while behind here. You can see we've spent a lot of energy attempting to get Van Garderen back into this group. We just can't get back in. We're still dangling off the back. The pace so fast in this group as they try to catch the breakaway up the road. So back in the breakaway, 37k to go. I don't think we have a chance at the stage, unfortunately. Less than two minutes back to the peloton. We will try and take these sprint points again though with Chris Neerlands. Uh, maybe gone slightly too early to the front here. Slightly uphill as well. So we'll leave it a little bit later. Maybe go with 800 meters. There you go. Can we take the points ahead of the rest of the guys in this group? As Larson struggling to hold the wheel. We've gone too early. And I think we just about holds on. Did we take any points for maybe second or third? Um, in the end, no points and no seconds for Neerlands. So Peacock has attempted to get the guys water. He doesn't have it in him though. He's too tired from bringing back Van Garderen to this group. Hopefully TJ can stay here. He's got very reduced yellow. As you can see, I'm actually going to move to protect him rather than Burson Hagen, who's looking very, very good. Indeed, Tiada looking good as well. Up in the breakaway, maybe it's time to launch an attack with the Peloton coming in quickly now. So 2.5k to go in the climb. I do think we'll try a little attack here with Neerlands. Anyhow, it seems the guy's attacking for the KOM points. Let's take El Faraz's wheel, McNulty, Marte and Larson as well. We're not strong enough to go solo here at this point. We will use our energy gel, uh, energy gel though. 600 meters to go. Can we punch in a little attack? I think we will just about be strong enough to beat McNulty here. And yes, we are, as you can see, cruising across the top of the climb in first place. And TJ Van Garderen is just about going to be strong enough to stay in this group. Hopefully we can now recover on this downhill section um, and then cruise into the finish line. So 9k to go. We have a few more climbs to negotiate. Very short climbs. And you can see still 50 seconds for the breakaway. Sunderland now coming to the front. And thinking about it, I'm not sure who can lead out Burson Hagen here. Maybe we'll have to take Lawless's wheel or another of the stronger sprinters, maybe Paddy Bevin for the moment. I think Burson uh, Hagen looks pretty good. And now it does seem like it will be the end for the breakaway with Movistar hunting us down into the final 5k. So 5k to go in this one. It's a very close finish here. We're trying to stay with Brandon McNulty. We have 30 seconds still 
on the Peloton. Bosenhagen is on Valverde's wheel. I think he could be the best wheel to take. Maybe try a little attack now with Neil Ans into the downhill section. Looking pretty good. The rest of the breakaway have been caught. Bosenhagen in a good position on Valverde's wheel. Can we hold it to the line with Neil Ans? I don't think we're going to be able to. Bosenhagen on Valverde's wheel. Neil Ans tries to hold it. We're going to try and sprint now with Bosenhagen into the final meters. Neil Ans going to be caught here. I don't think we're going to be able to challenge for the stage. And I think today will be for Paddy Bevin. Bosenhagen coming very late, but it's a painful second place. Patrick Bevin wins the stage, a very exciting finish. And TJ Van Garderen, I think, will survive in the front group. Another very exciting stage in Spain. And you can see there were some gaps just behind TJ Van Garderen, including the previous race leader, Jonas Vingegaard. He loses almost a minute today. Same with Ilnor Zakarin and everyone else in this group right here. You can see the likes of Hagisa, um, Godou have lost time in this one. However, Vingegaard just about still holds on to the leader's jersey. We're in third with Bosenhagen and fourth with Nealands. So it's the first true GC day of this Volsa Ciclista at Catalunya, a massive final climb. You can see 11K at an average of 7.5%. The likes of Pino, Bookman, Landa are the three favorites. Expecting to struggle somewhat with our team. We'll give it our best though. We're underway then and we do get a look at Bosenhagen in his distinctive jersey. I do want to try and get as many riders in today's breakaway as possible. Uh, you can see I'm trying to get Sanchez and Neolans to the front as well. Uh, let's try and attack now with Sanchez, maybe follow uh, the Burgos rider right here. Bosenhagen, we don't really want him in the breakaway. He's only pacing to try and um, allow the other guys to come to the front. And to be fair, looks like it could be too late already for Neolans. So 15 riders in today's breakaway, including three from the YouTube pro cycling team, including Luis Leon Sanchez, Tom Pickock, and Chris Neilands. You can see the other guys in this group. I'm Van Hooker, who I actually rode on Zwift with this morning. His teammate, Thomas de Ghent, Madrazo, Yetzibo is here again, as well as Ruben Fernandez. So we are now in a very strong position in this race with these guys up the roads. Pickock 72 Mountain, Sanchez 75 Mountain. Um, so I don't think we'll pace with Luis Leon Sanchez. i let the other guys do the pacing for him because he is potentially our best chance at the stage today, I would suggest. Back in the peloton, Bosenhagen, Camargo, Antiada will look after TJ Van Garderen, who's on a very, very nice plus three day. So the pace in the peloton has been absolutely rapid so far. The gap less than two minutes up to the breakaway. I'm doing my best to keep the lead with Neilands pacing on 85. We'll even go up to 88 on this climb right here. Paycock protecting Sanchez, trying to do his best to give him his best chance possible at winning the stage. Seems to be doing absolutely no good at the moment though. And I have this man right here to blame. So Pickock is done. Sanchez overtakes our deer at least, but it looks like the four guys at the very front will be strong enough to hold us off. Can we try and catch them at least at the top of the climb? I think we'll get Gebra right, uh, right here and get fourth place just about, but we're now 20 seconds down on the front three. Harada, De Ghent and Fernandez. My word, this is crazy. We've just had attacks from Froome and Pino who have overtaken the leaders of the race and just 10 riders left in the front group. Bookman, Lander, Thomas Yates, Nibali, Van Garderen, Valverde and Higita. Everyone else in the team has been dropped quite clearly by our day behind now. And we're gonna do our best to stay here as long as possible, but you can see we're pretty much done already. So the likes of Gudu, Zacharin, Vingegaard, De La Cruz, already out the back, Latour, Carthy, Barde and Kelderman just trying to get back in here to this 13 man group at the front of the race. There are bonus seconds available. I'm not going to try and challenge for them. We're just doing our best to conserve our energy before the final climb here. So we now have 10k to go for the riders at the front. And there is Thibaut Pino attacks from this group through it's absolutely done. Let's just try and maintain with Van Garderen right here, uh, but we're gonna have to make our own pace, I think. We'll start on 75, uh, we'll relay at maybe 72, I think. Just try and stay in this group. Doesn't look like we're able to at this pace though. Uh, you can see one minute 30 to the group behind, they have no chance of getting back in here. 
So six and a half K to go. You can see riding alone at the moment. We're trying to catch Chris Froome. Um, we'll try and ride with him for a bit as well. Fuglesang has gone out the back. Seven riders right here with Pino about 20 seconds clear at the moment. So I'm just going to try and recover behind Froome for a bit as we cross the 5k to go mark in the stage. Froome's literally going harder than we are, um, even though he's out of energy. Trying to catch Fuglesang, I think we're going for a top 10 here. As you can see, Higita has been dropped. Yates out the back, Valverde and Bookman out the back. Just Nibali, Thomas and Lander trying to hunt down Thibaut Pino, who looks so, so strong today. 2k to go for the Frenchman. So 100 meters left for the Frenchman, Thibaut Pino. He's going to win the stage. He's going to go into the leader's jersey. Freelander is second. You can see Nibali, Thomas and Bookman Valverde much further back. And then a massive gap back to us in this group with Froome and Fuglesang. I'll try a little attack actually. We've sat with them for a little while. We've now dropped them very, very nicely indeed. Try and pace to the line of maybe 75. Try and cut this gap to Higita up the road. So into the final few hundred meters, let's try and up this to 85. Sprint for the line. And you can see a very good job dropping Froome and Fuglesang in the final and a massive three further minutes to this group behind. It destroys everyone else. We were over five minutes down on Thibaut Pino, but we finished in ninth place on the stage. Oh my word. You can see 12th place Dunbar, almost 10 minutes down. So we actually go into eighth place in the GC with Van Garderen. I think we take that when you look at the riders we're competing with here. We stay above Hagita because apparently he lost time on an earlier stage. Uh, but of course, Pino in the leader's jersey. Thibaut Pino also leads the points classification with Boatsen Hagen in third. Uh, we have Yatsabol in first in the KOM jersey. Higita goes into the lead of the young riders. Before the race, I probably would have said that stage four is the queen stage. But now it has to be stage three after that absolute massacre uh, on yesterday's stage. However, today, plenty more climbing, no respite today. And of course, Pino will be the big favourite again. So on second thoughts, I thought it would be good to have at least someone up the roads. We have got Tom Peacock in this group of 27 riders in today's breakaway. You can see the type of riders in this group. Zacharin, Hagen, Gessink, Thomas de Gent. Esteban Chavez in this group up the road. So I'm just trying to stay in the breakaway with Pickock here, but that is proving to be a pretty much impossible task considering his race day form. The pace so, so hard yet again today. This race has been so, so hard for the teams. Burst and Hagen are going out the back. He can just go on auto for the remainder of the day, trying to look after Tiada and Van Garderen. So Pickock has now been dropped in this group of six riders, including Cavagna and Thomas de Ghent. Very surprisingly caught behind. Seems he's not quite feeling it today. Um, and you can see in this group, we're getting absolutely destroyed. Camargo is going to have to look after Van Garderen. Tiada can just try and sit on his wheel. Uh, these guys can just go on auto. 70 riders in the peloton with Omar Freyle pacing so, so hard on the front. So I do think we're going to lose Camargo here as well. Tiada is going to have to move over and protect Van Garderen. Camargo, try and stay here if you can. But I don't think he will be able to. Um, you can see Pickock about to be caught. Um, and I do think he will hopefully be able to stay in the peloton over the top. We will see about that though. At the head of the race, it looks like Yetzibol able to take the points again, is he? Harada comes through. He takes the points on this occasion. So it's still Astana on the front. I guess Fuglesang must be feeling very good today. To have his team working so hard. Let's try and stay towards the front of this group as we get blocked off very slightly. Not a big issue though at this point in the stage. Just trying to conserve our energy as now Eros Kopecky comes to the front um, and it seems I don't think the breakaway will have a chance at victory with the pace in the peloton today. So 13 k to go in the stage. It's time to come to the front with Van Garderen. and we're going to try and set a bit of a pace or at least just stay to the front of this group as Padoon again, pacing very, very hard indeed. We've used Tiada's energy gel. He's been a real, real help on this stage so far. Um, I think we can go down to 70, 77 or something for the moment. We'll just maintain position in this group. If we look up the roads, Hagen and Zacharin have attacks. 
So I think Van Garderen is a rider that likes a steady tempo more than constantly attacking, accelerating, and then decelerating. And there you go, Lander is on the attack. Um, and that's why I'm setting a pace on the front uh, rather than sitting in quite a steady tempo. Uh, you can see just 8k to go in the stage. Lander trying to attack Thibaut Pino to try and get into that leader's jersey. Millard doing a fantastic job bringing him in though. Tiada is now done. He is finally done for the day. And I think that is the head of the race right there. I think Higita is trying to attack now. We'll again try and continue pacing on a steady tempo with Van Garderen. Try and stay in the front group here. So Mikhail Lander attacking again. Let's go up to 1992 with Van Garderen. We need to try and stay with him now with just 4k to go. Maybe we can try a little attack now over the top of the climb. It's not going to work. Let's just sit in. The breakaway have now been caught. Let's try and use our energy gel. Try and recover somewhat while staying with Pino and Lander on this very short descent. Maybe we can follow these guys. They're on the attack again. Oh my word. Very, very tough finish to today's stage. Do we have enough energy left? to challenge for the victory. I'm not sure. Trying to stay in a good position with Van Garderen. We can sprint for the line. I don't think we quite have enough left. And it seems Thibaut Pino is unbeatable at the moment. He wins the stage ahead of Yates, Valverde and Nibali. Van Garderen, a solid performance. He will finish in the front group in the top 10. So a very solid performance by Van Garderen again today. We just didn't quite have the kick in the end to really challenge for the stage. Pino unbeatable at the moment um, and you can see 14th and down did lose time. I can't really see anyone big in the GC down here which does mean we stay in 8th place in the GC as well. So we take a break from Catalonia and we travel to the E3 Bink Bank Classic over 200 kilometers, one of the main cobble classics at least there isn't a monument. You can see plenty of strong riders at this race the likes of Van Aert, Stuyven and Gilbert Let's take a look at our squad. So leading the team, he's making a return. It's Heinrich Hausler coming back after his poor performance at Omni Pet Newsblad. Uh, he will lead the team today though, up to 94% fitness. So hopefully he can put in a good performance. Alongside him, we've got Roland's, Timo Rusen, Stan De Wolf, Pascal Enkorn, Andreas Dockbro, and the youngster and the final rider, I believe who hasn't ridden for the team yet, Making his debut, we have David Decker, the young sprinter and cobbled specialist from the Netherlands. So we're underway here at E3. You can see a nice plus one day for Hausler, plus two for Enkorn as well. Um, and I think we're just going to keep everyone in the peloton today uh, rather than putting anyone in the breakaway. So it's a bad moment here because Pascal Enkorn has fallen. Um, I'm going to try and get him back into the group by himself. I mean, it seems the pace isn't too hard at the moment. So hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult. So a few more attacks. Riders trying to get in that front group. The likes of Haller, Postelberger and Luke Rowe. Again though, I'm just going to try and keep everyone in this group to conserve as much energy as possible. So only 85k to go in the race already. Still 150 riders in this group. We're just coming into the tough section of the race. We need to be very aware and I may send some riders to the front to do some pacing as well. So this has been very tough so far. Rulands has been dropped. He had enough energy. He just got caught behind on one of the cobbled sectors, sadly. But we do still have Rosen, Hausler and the Wolf looking pretty good in this peloton of just 40 riders now. Um, it's Martins on the front for Yambe Visma. Still 12 riders a minute up the road as well. So over the Timeberg now coming into the Paterberg. Decker now gone out the back as well. Enkhorn just about still in this group of just 32 riders. I'm not going to do any pacing today. Um, I don't really think we have the squad for it. We'll leave that to the kind of elite teams in the race. More cobbles and hills just around the corner. So we're now over the Paterberg. Askreen on the front and just 19 riders in this group. The likes of Van Marker and Narsen are behind as well as Betiol as well. Now coming into the Eau de Quarmont, we need to stay right to the front with Heinrich Hausler up to 94 as Jasper Stoven seems to make his move for Trek Segafredo. Really tough to avoid getting blocked on this climb. Stoven flying up the road as you see. Rosen, try and protect Hauser now if you can. Uh, but Hauser going alone, it would seem. Uh, De Wolf is now done. Great job 
by him today. Let's just try and stay here with Hauser if we can with the likes of Askreen, uh, Velens, Pedersen and Dagenkolb. But what an attack that was by Jasper Sturven. Uh, he's well up the road, as you see, at the front of the race by himself. Uh, we're still in this group of 20 riders. We will try and sit in for the moment, still with one more climb to go. So Benut has been caught behind. Same with Van Bala and Sepp Van Marker, who is behind. It's not ideal for Sepp Van Marker at all. Uh, but Jasper Storven has got a massive lead. He's gone very early, still with 30k to go. I think he would have expected someone else to follow him. I'm feeling pretty hopeful here because I think Hauser will be strong enough to get over this climb in the lead group. Let's try and do it right here. Rosen pretty much cooked for the day now. He can just rest up for the remainder of the day. Hausler, you can see how quick the pace is in this group. Gilbert, Van Der Poel all here as well with Heinrich Hausler. You can see there it's trying to attack away, it would seem. Let's go up to 99 with Hausler, try and sit in. Jungle's not attacking, it would seem. That is absolutely perfect for us because we're able to stay in this group. Might even try a little one on this section over the top with Heinrich Hausler. Uh, no one seems to want to follow though, so let's just sit in this group with Heinrich Hauser. Just 14 riders, or maybe six riders in this group. 10 riders in the group behind. Beautifully done there by Heinrich Hauser. So I've dropped to the group behind with Heinrich Hauser. You can see in this group of 11 riders, just 30 seconds down uh, on the front of the race. Van Aert, Gilbert and Lampert did attack and Sturven attacks again. My word, Sturven looks so, so strong this race. Uh, let's concentrate on Hausler though. 16k to go. Let's hope we get brought back in. But there's attacks now going off in this group. We need to try and follow someone. Make sure we stay in this group. We're looking very low on yellow though now with Heinrich Hausler. Maybe follow Vanderpool. I think that's probably a sensible wheel. So 14k to go. Hausler just about staying in this group. It's just Van Avermaet and Stuyven up the road now. We're just trying to conserve as much energy as possible. I will use our energy gel. Let's sit in. For the moment, maybe follow Vanderpool again or Stefan Kung even. Uh, he looks like a good wheel at the moment as we're riding away from these guys. Uh, you can see just 14 riders in this group as Jungles going out the back now. I don't think we have the strength to really try anything here in this group of 15 riders. Hopefully the pace now slows, but Van Avmat goes again. We just cannot follow. Let's sit on Vanderpool's wheel um, and try and stay here as long as possible. Uh, I think we're going for probably a top 15 or a top 10 at this point. So 7k to go in what has been a very exciting E3. Uh, you can see Van Avermaet, Pollitt and Lampert just up the roads. More attacks taking place with Roe, Postelberger and Haller trying to go up the roads. Narsen attacking. Let's try and take his wheel. Luckily it slows again. Hopefully no more attacks for the moment. Let's try and uh, drop back in this group. Follow Wout van Aert. Um, 4k to go. Let's try and conserve some energy for a potential sprint right here. So two and a half K to go, Wout van Aert leading the Peloton at the moment. Let's up the pace now with Hauser up to maybe 78. Let's follow Greg van Avermaet. I think he'll be a good wheel to have as it's a late attack by Luke Rowe. We can try and sprint for it. Who's going to take the win? Is it Gilbert? Is it Yves Ampert? It looks like it will be Greg van Avermaet in a very close finish. I think we'll get maybe 11th place, 12th place with Hauser in the front group. Not a bad performance today, to be fair, by Heinrich Hausler. So it's a Belgium 1, 2, 3, 4 in the E3 Bink Bank Classic. Hausler did well to just about stay in that front group. Uh, to be fair, promising signs ahead of Paris-Roubaix. Although saying that, our objective for that race was a top five. Clearly some way off with Hausler. Uh, luckily, a one-star objective. So after a quick break, we are back in Spain for the Volta Ciclista a Catalunya. Another hilly stage today, more for the sprinters, I would say. Uh, some shorter hills after this first climb, and then it does come into a flatter finish. Let's see what we can do today. So you can see a good day for Edval Bersenhagen. I am going to see if he's allowed up the roads in today's breakaway. I do want to try and get in the break with the Spaniards, but we're really struggling to get to the front here. So frustrating. Here we go. We do have a little gap right here. Let's try and follow this Norwegian fella. Try and get up the roads with Luis Leon Sanchez as well to help out Edval Bersenhagen. So Bersenhagen has now been joined up the roads by Luis Leon Sanchez. I am really happy to have this man up the roads. A plus three day. 75 hill, 65 mountain. I think we can get over these climbs and potentially survive in the breakaway. 
if the peloton let us go and that is why i'm going to try and pace up this entire climb with luis leon sanchez on 75 uh, you can see the rest of the group thomas de gent of course we need to be wary of this man more riders trying to get in this group plenty of riders attacking including julio giacone as well you can see the pace in the peloton not really there at the moment so Luis Leon Sanchez has done what can only be described as a beautiful job on this climb so far. Almost seven minutes on the peloton. Um, I don't even care about these mountain points. Uh, we'll continue pacing on 75, try and follow any attacks if they go. Fernandez now trying to go up the roads. Ten riders at the front at the moment. Uh, let's see if the, uh, these other guys can join. I think they will do. So Sanchez again trying to pull as hard as he can in this group with the peloton now four minutes down. Oh, I thought we had a big enough lead, but it seems they're bringing it in again with relative ease. Sanchez is going to do all he can today for Burton Hagen because I do believe we can win the stage with the Norwegian today. We don't care about these mountain points. We're not going to win that competition at this point. So I'm actually going to try and take these sprint points with Burton Hagen. Uh, we can maybe go now off the front. I think we'll take them pretty easily. There you go. We can recover straight to Luis Leon Sanchez's wheel. Uh, we're currently sixth in that competition. So 65K to go. We only have two and a half minutes on the peloton. They have been pacing so, so hard. You can see Nierlands is now done. We'll have to protect Van Garderen with Tom Pidcock. Up in the breakaway, Boris Hagen not looking too great. Obviously, neither is Sanchez, but we're now at the highest point in the stage pretty much downhill to the line from here, hoping we can hold on for stage victory. So I have checked this group and it seems the strongest sprinters are probably Hola Guards. Um, maybe uh, we have Finetto somewhere in this group. There he is, he's a fairly strong sprinter, but definitely Burson Hagen should take this in a sprint if we can survive with all of these riders. So Giulio Ciccone is the first man to attack from the breakaway 27K to go. We'll come to the front with Luis Leon Sanchez. Let's not panic. Let's pace on maybe maybe 88. That should be fine. 92 as we're on this short hill. That is because the Peloton are racing up to us. As you can see, just 29 riders in this front group. My word. Let's go up to 92 just to make sure we stay here with our guys. It's now the Koenig quick step on the front doing their best to bring this breakaway in. But what a job by Luis Leon Sanchez today. That is the highest point again of the stage. We can now pace on maybe 85, maintaining that one minute lead to the Peloton for now. So 14k to go, Giulio Giacone starting to tire. He only has seven seconds. I think he's wasting so much energy out the front. One minute 50 now back to the Peloton. Maybe they're starting to give up on the stage. We need to make sure we stay to the front now on this short hill. This is the final Real difficulty for Boson Hagen to negotiate. Let's go up to 90 with Luis Leon Sanchez. Try and prevent any attacks. If anyone tries to come past Boson Hagen, we will jump into their wheel. You can see Sanchez is now done for the day. Boson Hagen can try and pace on maybe 84. Uh, let's make sure we stay to the front of this group though. Uh, and that should be fine. What a job by Luis Leon Sanchez today. I do believe he is now done though. So back in the peloton, we do have attacks with 10k to go now. Pino having to chase them in. It's Valverde, Yates and Fuglesang. That shouldn't be a big issue for us though. Sanchez, try and come back and protect Burton Hagen if you can. He seems unable to do that at the moment though. This is absolutely perfect. Playing into our hands absolutely perfectly with 5k to go. More attacks taking place in the peloton. Uh, but this looks like it's going to come in for a sprint here. So Camargo is going to try and pace in TJ Van Garderen. I don't think uh, we need to worry about them taking the stage at this point. Boson Hagen can use his energy gel now. 3k to go. Make sure we come to the front of this group. There's a very slight hill right here. 2k to go. I'm getting quite nervous. I think we've got a great chance at the stage today into the final kilometer. We can now sprint with Boson Hagen and Luis Leon Sanchez into the final kilometer and a half. Boson Hagen going for the line. Harada's coming close, but Boson Hagen with a beautiful victory today. What a team victory. Luis Leon Sanchez, we congratulate you, my man. Sprint with everyone from the Peloton, um, and I don't think anyone will gain any time from this group.
I've got to say that was such a satisfying victory. Went absolutely to plan, exactly how I planned it from the beginning of the stage. Bersen Hagen out sprinting everyone in this group pretty comfortably. Hazel Sarada going quite close at the ends. But Luis Leon Sanchez, the man of the match in this one. You can see the peloton were 49 seconds down in the end. So looking at the new standings, Van Garderen stays in 8th in the GC. Boerson Hagen up to 2nd in the points classification. Looking uh, fairly decent uh, to challenge for that jersey. In the KOM jersey, Ruben Fernandez takes that from Yetzer Bowl. And it's Higita in the Young Riders. On to stage six then, and this is one of the only true sprinter stages of the race. Pretty flat from the off, only a few very short hills. You can see Alvaro Hodge is the big favourite today. We've got Paddy Bevin, Jon Aberastri and Bersenhagen as the other favourites. So Camargo has had a fantastic race supporting our leaders and he's on a plus three day today. So I do want to give him the opportunity in the breakaway. Let's see if we can join up with this group up the road. I mean, the stage doesn't particularly suit him, uh, but we'll just throw him up the road and see what he can do. So you can see nine riders in today's breakaway, uh, including Camargo, we have Holmes, Fuentes, Vandenberg, Michael Valgen, probably the strongest rider in this group though. So 52k to go in the race. Uh, the breakaway have just two and a half minutes back to the peloton. I think they will pretty comfortably catch this group. Camargo, we can maybe try a little attack on this climb seeing as this is the only real part of the stage where we can try and make a difference. Maybe we can drop a few riders over the top. Uh, let's see how this goes. So we will take the points with Diego Camargo, 30 seconds to the group behind. Um, and to be fair, I think they'll catch us pretty comfortably. We'll continue the pace though on 75, try and go solo, see if someone else can perhaps join us up the roads whilst making sure Boson Hagen stays in this peloton. So it's a big moment in the race because Thibaut Pino has just fallen. Um, of course, his team will wait up, but we do need to make sure everyone is staying to the very front of the peloton now, because I expect some teams may try and pace with Pino behind. Um, and at the front at the moment, it is CCC and Dekoinik Quickstep trying to pace in the breakaway. We're gonna stop pacing in this group. We have no chance at the stage with Camargo, uh, but Pino going to have to work hard with his team to get back on here. Seven k to go, Harold Tiada will cruise in with Van Garderen on his wheel. You can see Pino still behind. He's having to relay himself now. He's not gonna get back in, you know. I think Pino is going to lose the leader's jersey today, but five k to go. We can use everyone's energy gels. Sanchez up to 99. We have Nealands, Peacock, and of course, Burson Hagen in this group as well. I've potentially gone too early here because we do have a slight uphill to the line. So Sanchez can drop us off. Nealands can go to 93, I do believe. Uh, Tiada still doing a very good job. 2K to go, Nealands can go up to 99, maybe sprints. 1.8K to go, Pickock, 1.4K to go, Burson Hagen into the final 900 meters. Let's sprint with everyone else. Burson Hagen going for his second stage in a row, but it will be Alvaro Hodge. No, it's taken from him. Paddy Bevan takes the stage win ahead of Hodge. Burson Hagen was fifth in the end. Um, let's see where Pino is. So Paddy Bevin takes the stage when ahead of Alvaro Hodge, who will be very disappointed with that. If we scroll down, you can see everyone finished in the same time. Pino very, very lucky to keep hold of the jersey today. So again, we take a break from Spain and Catalonia and we have Ghent Revelgem today in Flanders Fields. More of a sprinter's classic in this one. You can see the likes of Van Aert, Trentin, Sagan are the favourites. Kristoff, even Grunewagen is a favourite uh, because there's not as many hills and cobbles in this classic. 241 kilometres though. So taking a look at our squad for this one, we have the likes of Stander Wolf, Ben Swift, who comes back in, uh, replacing the dropped Jürgen Rulands. He's going to rest up. He's got some big classics ahead of him with, of course, the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix. In addition to Swift, we've got Rosen, David Decker again, Heinrich Hausler, Pascal Enkhorn and Andreas Stockbro. So the only change from E3 is Swift in for Ruelands. So like E3, I'm not going to go in the breakaway today. We'll keep everyone in the peloton. Uh, you can see Swift, Decker and De Wolf are the main guys with plus days today. Uh, so I am going to protect Stander Wolf 
as well as Ben Swift, of course. But DeWolf, you can see he has progressed pretty nicely. He's a decent little sprinter, uh, so we'll try and protect this man. So I've come to the front with Enkhorn and Stockbro. We're going to try and pace as hard as we can over these hills. Make sure everyone in the team stays as close to the front as possible. We're doing a good job of that at the moment. Let's see if we can try and get rid of some of the pure sprinters. So some riders have been caught behind. There's this group of about 72 riders, the likes of Asgreen, Merlier. Uh, we've got Chimelai, Barbier as well. Uh, so we have done a good job of dropping some guys. Uh, still the likes of Grunewagen in this group though. So Timo Rosen comes to the front. We're just coming into this very, very steep climb. And yes, Benji, I am using Hausler as a domestique on this minus one day. Uh, I don't think Rosen is going to be strong enough. So Hausler is going to come to the front as well right here. We've got DeWolf and Ben Swift, both looking very good. They are definitely our two leaders for the day. Uh, let's put Rosen and Hausler up to 92, maybe even 95 ready for this climb. These guys, I think we'll have DeWolf protecting Swift. Let's put them up to 85, 88. Make sure we're staying with Heinrich Hausler. He can go up to 90. Uh, Swift down to 80 as well as Rosen is now done. Uh, let's make sure we're doing our best to create some gaps on this section right here. Swift's up to 90. Hauser doing a good job. Uh, we can put him up to 95. The Wolf can pace on 95 now. Uh, we'll put Swift in his wheel. Hauser is now done. Rosen is done. Uh, the Wolf pacing very hard out of this climb. Let's see how many riders end up in this group right here. So it seems 21 is the answer. We have a group of 35 a bit further back. Machete having to do the pacing. Vanderpool in this group as well. Uh, they've come back on now though, 58 riders in this group. It's now Trexiger Fredo pacing hard on the front. Uh, we'll put Swift on maintain and 90. The Wolf can try and protect him. Again, some more gaps created. Um, I do think they're going to come back on though. So 40 k to go in the race, more gaps being created on this final section of hills. I still see the likes of Bennett and Machete in this group. We're getting blocked off very slightly. Let's go up to 90 with Swift as Betio laying down a very fast pace on the front. I mean, Grunewagen still here. We've got no chance, surely, with Grunewagen cruising over the hills as he is at the moment. Although finally, he seems to crack somewhat. Um, and that is promising with the Kemmelberg just coming up now. So we're just coming into the Kemmelberg. This is a chance for Swift to whittle away at the sprinters again. Like I said, Grunewagen and Bennett still in this group. Uh, let's put Swift up to 87, 88. Maybe even 90, 92, 95. Let's just hammer it up this section. The Wolf is pretty much done as Swift gets blocked off absolutely horribly. Uh, but let's put it up to 99. Maybe try a little attack over the tops with Ben Swift. And we do just that. Uh, the Wolf has been dropped. Swift on the attack. And we catch a few guys from the early breakaway. That's Gabs Cullog and Eduardo Affini. We're going to have to do the pulling in this group. And with just 20 seconds, I don't think that's worthwhile. Uh, so we'll put the pace down to maybe 70. 32 riders in the group behind, and I think they will catch us here. So if we look behind, we can see the likes of Alex Kirsch, John Dagenkolb, Arnold Damar has been dropped. Uh, you can see Dylan Grunewagen and Matteo Machetti, as well as Alberto Dainese, have been dropped. Philipson's behind at the moment. Michael Matthews even is behind. Uh, so I do want to try and come to the front with DeWolf. Um, because Swift is about to get caught and I will do some pacing with DeWolf if possible. So Ben Swift sitting in with 14k to go. We're just going to try and sit in this group to the line. We have Stuyven, Lampert and Stefan Kung on the attack. I'm sat on T.S. Benut's wheel at the moment. Uh, you can see DeWolf doesn't really have the strength to help us any more. Grunewagen still behind in this group right here. Uh, so let's just try and sprint with these guys. Hopefully we can get a top five. Anything better than that would be perfect. So 5k to go in Ghent Revel. Again, more attacks going off the front. I will jump in Stuyven's wheel if possible. As Van Bala is going off the front, we can use our energy gel as well. Making sure we stay to the front of this group at this pivotal moment in the race. Uh, you can see Van Bala is a strong attack and just 21 riders now in this group. I will follow Sam Bennett, who's probably the big favourite to win at this point. Although Caleb Ewan, Christoph Corbrelli, they're all still here. Let's try and recharge our reds. You can see Seneschal going off the front at the moment with 2k to go. We can maybe up the pace now with Bennett up to 85. Let's follow Caleb Ewan if possible. It doesn't look like it. We're going to have to sprint for the line. I don't think it's going to be a good result. 
for Ben Swift. Up the road, Caleb Ewan takes the win. Tunis in second, Bennett in third. And Swift, I think we can get a top 10. It's going to be close, maybe just outside. Uh, we get ninth place, not a bad result today. So Ben Swift not quite living up to his recent results today, but a decent sprint when you consider the likes uh, of Jakobsen, Christoph, Colbrelli, Trentin, Bennett, Tunison, and Ewan, who we are up against. I did make a mistake in coming off Caleb Ewan, uh, Caleb Ewan's wheel at a pivotal moment. Um, anyhow, a top 10, not too bad. So at this point, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very long episode. Anyhow, one more stage to cover, and it's the final one in Catalonia. Plenty of hills and a pretty short stage. Let's get it. I like this race day condition a lot. A plus four day for TJ Van Garderen, the eighth place man in the GC. We also get a plus four on Harold Tiada. Uh, so I'm going to keep everyone in the peloton today and try and absolutely hammer it over these final hills and potentially gain some time. So we're over the climb a few times already. I've put Burson Hagen, Pickock and Camargo all on the front. On 92, we're going to up this as well when we reach the climb. Just one and a half minutes up to the breakaway, I think we should pretty comfortably be able to catch up with them. Uh, let's put these guys on 95, Tiada 90, uh, Van Garderen on 87, just to be safe. And let's try and bring in the breakaway and potentially put some other uh, GC guys in a bit of difficulty. So Camargo, Burson, Hagen and Peacock have done a fantastic job. They are now done though. Uh, let's put Neerlands and Sanchez up to 92, 95 over the top of the climb as we're slowly uh, catching the breakaway up to 99 quickly on the downhill section. You can see still quite a few riders in this group. We're hopefully creating gaps all the time though. Um, and I do think we will be able to challenge for the stage uh, rather than leave it to the breakaway. So Harold Tiada pumping it up this climb yet again. Let's try and go 99 into the downhill section. See if we can drop anyone from the GC group. Unlikely at this point. Still 60 riders in the peloton it would seem. Uh, let's go down to maybe 88 again with Tiada. Um, and I do think we will try and attack on the next climb with TJ. So I've noticed Lander and Bookman have been caught behind. You can see Lander in this group Bookman is here as well there he is they are of course both above us in the gc the other can go up to 92 uh, let's try and pace for as long as possible with harold Tiada. what a job he has done for tj today it's now time to leave tj to attack as you can see uh we're followed by fugelsang pino yates who follow pretty comfortably at the moment let's try and continue this attack as we lap some riders very strong attack by Van Garderen over the top on 99 into the downhill section. Uh, who is able to stay in this group? It seems just 14 riders at the moment. So you can see Mikel Lander is in trouble. He is well down. You can see Bookman is down here as well. He hasn't recovered. Froome and Valverde have both been dropped as well as now Simon Yates. My words, what a performance this has been by the team. Just 10 riders in the front group. Van Garderen, use your energy gel now. I will pace with Pino if he wants to. Of course, Nibali now on the attack. Let's follow Geraint Thomas. Uh, Fuglesang and Pino follow as well. It's a strong attack by Nibali. Um, I want to try and attack past these guys if possible, if they slow down. But it's a very strong attack by Vincenzo Nibali. Just eight riders remaining in this group. Let's try and make sure we stay here. And we do just that. Just five riders in the front group. We have Nibali, Van Garder and Thomas, Pino and Fuglesang who look like they will compete for the victory today. So further behind in amongst the back markers we have Higita, Bevin and I think Aberastri trying to get back on. What's a performance by them? I don't think we're going to take the stage in a sprint with Van Garder and we will do our best though into the final kilometre. Let's sprint with TJ Nibali trying to come. Pino looks good and Thibaut Pino takes the stage win I believe yet again. Van Garder with a very nice fourth place. Let's see how much time we're able to take on some of the guys who've been dropped today. So you can see this group with Valverde, Bookman, Froome and Yates lose about two minutes or just under two minutes to TJ. Uh, and we know we've got Lander even further down. That was a really fun stage. Shame we couldn't finish on the podium. We needed to drop the likes of Pino and Thomas though, of course, much better sprinters than TJ. In the GC, we do gain one place moving above Simon Yates by a single second in the end. 
The final podium is Pino, Nibali and Thomas with Lander dropping to fourth and we are only about 30 seconds away from a top five here. A shame we only move up to seventh place in the GC with Valverde and Bookman so close just ahead of us but I think we can be very happy with Van Garderen's performance at this race. Although saying that Pino was in a different world, he destroyed everyone at this race on all the climbs. Um, you can see he also took the points jersey just ahead of Burst and Hagen. It was Ruben Fernandez taking the hotly contested KOM jersey and of course Higita won the Young Riders. So I think we'll end this episode by looking at the rankings and you can see Pino is now first in the individual rankings. Ben Swift in fourth place at the moment though. What a season so far for the Brits. Foss still here. Gibbons is 20th for us. Milano 42nd as well. In the Super Prestige standings we're just behind Ineos um, in second place. A very good performance by the team so far and we do top the World Tour rankings just ahead of Ineos and Jumbo Visma. So I hope you enjoyed this very lengthy episode. Um, hopefully it wasn't too long. Hopefully it was at least a little bit exciting for you guys. In the next one, it will be Blackwall riding towards the Vlaanderen, the Tour of Flanders, of course, another monument, and he'll follow that up with the Exulia Basque Country Tour. But anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely drop a like on the video. That really helps the channel and the series out. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.